We're finishing up State Standard 16 and 17 as we complete Chapter 9, Section 5, and we're doing a third part, which are hyperbolas still, but remember they're the rectangular hyperbolas. So here's a quick review of what we've learned so far. Rectangular hyperbolas are in the form x times y equals k, where k cannot equal 0. Remember, if we mentally solve in our head for y, y would equal k divided by x, and that was the equation of inverse variation. And two things, we're going to look to see whether k is a positive number or a negative number. If it's a positive number, the two branches of the hyperbola are in quadrants 1 and 3. Either case, the center is 0, 0. In this case, the asymptotes, and in both cases, the asymptotes are the x and the y axis. In this case, the transverse axis, the one that goes through the vertices, is y equals x. The conjugate axis of symmetry is y equals the opposite of x. Domain is a set of all real numbers, except x cannot be 0. And then the vertices are located where the transverse axis intercepts the graph of the hyperbola. So the vertices here are going to be the square root of the absolute value of k, square root of absolute value of k, then the opposite of the square root of the absolute value of k, and the opposite of the square root of the absolute value of k. That's how we calculate the vertices. As we look at one where k is positive, we see that the branches of our hyperbolas are in quadrant 1, quadrant 3, x-axis, y-axis are the asymptotes. Transverse axis is symmetry is the equation y equals x. Conjugate axis is y equals the opposite of x. Center is at 0, 0. And the two vertices we calculated here, and that's also where the transverse axis intersects the hyperbolas. Okay, let's look at hyperbolas in the other situation where k represents a negative number. The branches of the hyperbola are now in quadrant 2 and 4, but the center is still 0, 0. The asymptotes are still the x and y axis. However, the transverse axis of symmetry is now y equals x. The conjugate axis of symmetry is, sorry, that was y equals the opposite of x. Conjugate axis is y equals x. Domain is still the set of all real numbers where x is not equal to 0. And the vertices are located where the transverse axis intersects the graph. That's at the point the opposite of the square root of the absolute value of x, then the square root of the absolute value of k, sorry, those are both k, for the x and y values. Second vertex is the square root of the absolute value of k, and the opposite of the square root of the absolute value of k. As we look at this graph here, remember then, the branches of the hyperbola are in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. The x and y axes are still the asymptotes. Center is still 0, 0. The transverse axis is y equals the opposite of x. Conjugate axis is y equals x. And where the transverse x axis of symmetry is going to intersect the two vertices. And that's how we find the two vertices. Now, how do we actually graph these? Well, here's our strategy. Get the y variable by itself. Create a chart of points, including positive and negative values for x. And the reason we don't use x for 0. Remember that domain was all numbers except 0. And x represents the domains. All right, don't forget to draw and label the axes of symmetry, the center, and the axes. So let's take a look at an example. x times y equals 4. First step, get y by itself. So y equals 4 times x. And remember, this is one of those y is inversely proportional to x. We're going to make a chart of points. I'd say six points would be good. We want half of them to be negative, the other half of them to be positive. And the reason I'm choosing these points is because they divide nicely into four. So it's whatever k is, that's how I'm selecting my points. I'm looking for divisors of four, factors of four. So we put in negative 4. 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. Put in negative 2. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4. 4 divided by 1 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And let's go ahead and graph these. Now in this case, you're wondering, what are these little red stars over there? Well, we'll come back to that in a moment. 
But let's plot these points. So there's the point negative 4, negative 1. Here is the point negative 2, negative 2. Here is the point negative 1, negative 4. Now we're going to try to sketch a branch of a hyperbola through there. But we also have the point 1, 4. We also have the point 2, 2. And we also have the point 4, 1. So we're going to draw in our two branches of a hyperbolas, remembering that the x and y axis are the asymptotes. We're going to get closer and closer to that, but never touch, never intersect. Here's one axis of symmetry, y equals x. So that includes points like 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. And now we know why there was a star, red star, next to 2, 2. Because the square root of 4 is 2, so the point 2, 2 is one vertex, and the point negative 2, negative 2 is my other vertex. Here's my conjugate axis of symmetry. My center is at 0, 0. And so here's y equals x, my transverse axis. y equals the opposite of x, my conjugate axis. Center at 0, 0. My two vertices, 2, 2, and negative 2, negative 2. And that's all there is to drawing one. Let's look at another rectangular hyperbola where k is a negative number. Remember, isolate the variable y. Get that by itself first. We're going to make a chart of points. At least, the more points you get, the better. So at least three, if you can, for negatives and positive values. But six is a lot of nice multiples or factors. So we're going to include negative 6, negative 3, negative 2, 1, and their positive equivalents. And then we just start dividing. That's fairly simple. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is positive 2. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. Negative 6 divided by negative 1 is positive 6. Negative 6 divided by positive 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. And negative 6 divided by positive 6 is negative 1. Now, I chose these numbers carefully, and it may always not be so nice. What if k was 2 or 7? We're going to end up with some fractions. All right, well, let's take a look at our graph. Let's see what we've got. So here's the point negative 6, positive 1. There's the point negative 3, positive 2. There's the point negative 2, positive 3. There's the point negative 1, positive 6. Let's get the remaining four points. There's the point 1, negative 6, 2, negative 3, 3, negative 2, 6, negative 1. Draw our branch of our hyperbolas in, remembering that the x and y axes are the asymptotes, so you're going to get it closer and closer, never cross, never get parallel, never touch. Here's the center, 0, 0. We've got the conjugate axis of symmetry, y equals x. We've got the transverse axis of symmetry, y equals the opposite of x. And the thing we need to find now are the vertices. And remember that k was 6. So it's the opposite of the square root of 6, positive square root of 6. That gives us one vertex. Other vertex is positive square root of 6, negative square root of 6. That's our other vertex. And that's all we're going to do with uh, rectangular hyperbolas.